thank thank you, uh, Chairman Mr. Weinstein, on the, the talking on personnel issues. What do you see as the right balance between contractors and permanent employees, and and particularly on the contractor side, what do they bring with them that it may be hard to replicate? Uh, in, in the agency on a permanent basis. That's a, going, talking about management, sir, that's exactly one of the first management questions I'm gonna need to address, I think. And I've heard issues or concerns raised about an over-reliance on contractors at INA. Um, but look, there, there should always be a balance. You know, contractors provide a really important value. They allow you to, to surge. If you have a need to surge personnel, as you know, it takes forever to hire people, go through the standard process of hiring folks into the federal service. You can get contractors and surge quickly. They also are very helpful if you have particular needs or areas of expertise that you need to satisfy. Contractors can be brought in. You don't have to go train somebody up. So there's real value to contractors. By the same token, especially when you're talking about analysts, the optimal is to have a you know, traditional government employee who takes over the position learns this, the area of analysis, and really develops expertise, and isn't somebody who comes in and out on six-month assignments. That's the optimal, right? But there should be a balance. And in positions that I've held or offices I've, I've run, I've always looked at that, made sure there's a balance. Here, my sense is there might have been an over-reliance on contractors. I think that's been you know, being rectified. But one of the first things I do is, uh, as a manager is to look at that on day one. You know, as, as we think about the growing importance of artificial intelligence and machine learning um, and all of the public data that's out there, do you think we'll be able to keep up with the new techniques we need to, to sort this information down to where uh, a, a, a career individual can look at it? Or do we, are we gonna need some help uh, just dealing with all of the information that's publicly available. It's not anything that we're, we're getting some other way, but how do, you, how do you propose we go through that in the most effective way and know what we can know from the public available information that's out there? Right, well, I think you're raising sort of the, the dilemma of, of intelligence and the intelligence enterprise in general, which is there's always too much intelligence, and if you can't zero in on what you need, you lose you lose the significance of the intelligence you need to focus on. And especially when you're talking about an entity like INA that's looking at open source information. I mean, it's everywhere. It's, you know, there's so much of it. So there are a couple things. One, you identified one issue or one solution, which is um, artificial intelligence. And I have not gotten a sort of deep dive on what INA is doing with artificial intelligence to sort of to try to uh, get rid of the noise and focus on the important um, information. But my sense is that's an important part of their operations. And then also training and guidelines, making sure, especially when we're talking about, you know, looking at people who might be somewhere along the, around the line that separates violent extremists from just political extremists who have First Amendment rights to do what they're doing. You've got to be very careful about hoovering up everything about these people because we're talking about U.S. person information. So those guidelines have to provide strict guide, you know, uh, guidelines or, or guardrails uh, in terms of collections. That also helps to winnow down what you, you, um, you pull in. But that's, that's a real challenge. Um, that's, it's helpful. I think you're right. It's going to be one of the first things you have to deal with if you're confirmed for this job is, is how, how, how are we later going to have explained looking back and there's lots of information there and we just couldn't figure out how to find it even though it was publicly available information. And then the topic that you got into earlier, that's a different topic in my view of the, of the things that aren't as available uh, to the public as, as other things are. Um, the, um, and, and the mix of the contractors and the full-time employees, is it your view that you can find the full-time professionals that you now need for th this skill set that are willing to do this job as, a, as their career? Well, 
Uh, yes, and the main reason is because the people that I've been dealing with are, are top notch. And you know, the, the way you recruit the best is that you perform the best. If you, you're known for performing, for being a strong um, entity, people want to join you. They want to be part of your team. And so um, we will be, obviously, based on resources, and we'll be talking to you about resources as well, uh, resources permitting, um, we'll be looking for, you know, for the best and the brightest. And I think just generally we'll have access to them, but also there are others in the intelligence community who might be interested in coming over and doing some time on the domestic right. front. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Senator King on WebEx. All right, if Senator King is not going to